afternoon. The order speakers the amount of time it really takes to So first, I'll just introduce our target sheet um, and our project form. The and our focus this week is reducing the lead time from the patients in the holding area in New York, starting with time, and the definition of them to roll into the OR theater. And we're focusing on the first orders of the day. Our sponsor for this was Carol Gregor, and the process <laughs> owner was Dr. Ray Evan. Uh, and our support was Deb Dollar, and our key here was Donna. So our process flow is just looking at the patient coming into the holding area, the prep that went on there, and then them getting into the OR to the start of the case with all, with all of the required um, staff that we get to that. This is a picture of our team, and everybody will introduce themselves as they come up to speak. So this is our target progress report sheet for pre Um just showing some of the data that we're going to collect during the week. And a few things that we're focusing on during this time is our part travel business was phone calls that were going into the OR first thing in the morning for um, the staff to know if there was a bed available or not, or whether they could go ahead. And with data collected pre kaizen they were averaging 2.7 phone calls a day, um, whether or not they can get going with that first case of the day if they needed a bed for it. And our target was to cut that in half. We were also looking at some quality, some defects, um, and during our pre kaizen what we were targeting and looking at was the first ORs of the day for a time, and I think we collected 36, and of the 36 ORs, 33 of them were delayed due to um, one thing or another, but what stuck out with us was waiting for beds or with staff being ready and available to work.
of those 13 were booked with the anesthetists that had an OR sleep running that day. Of those 13, 10 of those resulted in a late OR start. Uh, one of those resulted in an on-time start, and two of those resulted, or two of those had a surgery, surgery that was cancelled. Our findings during the week were that there was an inconsistent time in the booking of the um, ECTs. ECTs are done on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays typically. Each of them take 15 minutes, and um, on occasion there is an extra one booked later in the day prior that uh, the anesthetist is unaware of, as well as the um, floor. So, um, the OR. So, we developed some standard work around this um, in the booking of that, and so the anesthetist, um, the on call anesthetist or the COVID anesthetist is contacted by the OR scheduling department, who has been contacted by the mental health unit clerk. Um, the standard time will be to book the first ECT at 7 o'clock in 15 minute increments. There's an average of two done per day. So um, that would result in the anesthetist being available to come back to the OR for 7.30, resulting in the start time of 7.45. Um, the 94 minutes of delay time with the uh, other interruptions for the anesthetist, some of those in interruptions include C-sections or epidurals or CVP on insertions, etc. Um, often there is a COPE anesthetist that is scheduled and assigned but there's no um, indication on the uh, physician call list that there is a um, COVID anesthetist that is available to do these, who is the most appropriate person to do these. So we just created some uh, simple work standard to now include um, the COVID anesthetist when they're scheduled will be there on the uh, list. Uh, in speaking with the anesthetist throughout the week, one of their concerns and the problem that they identified was that they do not have access to the patient information prior to the patient arriving in the holding bay. So um, they thought that it would be valuable to actually have some of that information. So we have created some standard work around that. Um, our scheduling department now delivers the charts when they're prepared the day before. And uh, an assistant has access to the room between 11 and 1, and then they return to day surgery so that any red flags are um, able to be caught and maybe dealt with prior to that. Uh, this is our multiple skills training list. Um, as you can see, Dr. Tangabella and I were able to reach most of the anesthetists um, and some of the other departments yesterday, with the exception of a few. And we'll just continue working on that. And Dr. Tangabella, did you want to yeah. speak? Oh, no. Yeah, just a few sure. things. Um, we found solutions, temporary solutions at the moment. Ideally, what we really need is to actually have a clinic on a daily basis so that we actually have patients being seen by a specific anesthetist doing a clinic so it would not interrupt the anesthetic uh, surgeries way on. There wouldn't be a, a, an ECT being done or an additional one being booked and then the OR starts late. There wouldn't be us actually needing to cancel the patient on the day because everybody ideally would be seen at the clinics in an appropriate time. So that would be in the hopefully near future time to do that.
and 13 minutes of lost OR time waiting for confirmation of a bed for the first case of the day that would be booked as the same day soon. This uh, equals more than two days of lost OR time in this period. Hi, my name is Cindy Patrick and I work in the OR scheduling office and I have the pleasure to work with Dr. Hopkinson. Throughout the week, um, with the data we collected, we can support the development can support the development of a work standard that has now been implemented to help eliminate some of the late starts in the OR. Um, same day surgery should not be first case of the day. Each theater to start with a day surgery case. Exceptions would be um, pediatric or obstetric same day surgeries can be first case of the day. We also have a few ideas sheets for the future IP, RPIWs. One regarding weekends discharges. We do not have enough beds on Mondays for our same day surgeries. Uh, we need more discharges to happen on Sundays. And our second recommendation would be to have even distribution of same day surgeries throughout the week. With this, um, we thought that central or scheduling and load leveling would be something to look at. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brian Velasquez, Chief Property Manager with the region. Uh, this week I worked with Dr. Pillay on patient flow from the holding area into the OR. The first issue we identified was there was real, really no defined start time for the OR. It was decided that pa the patients will be in the ORs and ready for surgery by 7.45. That's Monday to Thursday. On Fridays, they will be ready by 8.30. Two ideas that came from this, which, re which resulted in two end-ons that will be put into place. Uh, the first one was, we're going to put a sign up as we enter the OR, and this sign is going to state at what time surgery is going to start that day. The other end-on is we're going to build a display. This display is going to start at 7.30, and for 15 minutes, it's going to count down the time until OR start time. Should it not start on time, the display is going to turn red, and it's going to count how late surgery starts that day. Another idea we had was we thought maybe if the providers, the, that being the, surg the nurse, surgery nurse, the anesthesist, and the surgeon, if, if they would meet all together with the patient first thing in the morning. We tried this for a couple of days. It, it showed no improvement, and we scrapped that idea. After three days, we spent watching and recording times of the different processes going from the holding room to the OR. Um, we did, from that, we developed standard work combination sheets and percentage load charts. There were two things that came from this. The one thing we did notice, and you can see there, we do have enough time in the 15 minutes to get the patient to the OR if everyone's there on time and everyone's doing their job. Um, the other thing we noticed, pre kaizen and lead times, were reduced from 37 minutes to a post high Kaizen lead time of 26. Cycle times were reduced from 12 to 10 minutes. Hi, I'm Yegi Clay from the Department of General Surgery. And we developed a work standard in relation to reducing the wait times in the whole area. And what we thought was we would get the surgeon, the anesthetist, and the nurse to see the patient before 7.45 with an understanding that the patient gets to the OR door at 7.45. So we do not this work standard. The only exception would be on Fridays <coughs> because we start our OR at 8.30 as a result of meetings with the nursing staff and meetings with the visitors between 7.15 and 8.15. Yeah. This was one of the ideas we had. As a result of the meetings on Fridays, we decided to shift the general surgery meeting from Thursdays to Fridays. So we would have a time that start at 8.30 and all our academic meetings are held on Friday. In terms of the spaghetti diagram, we looked at ophthalmology and the movement of the ophthalmologist, the anesthetist and the surgeon from the recovery area to their OR. It was approximately 141 feet. We did find an easier way to do this, however, it went through our storage room in the OR and we felt that it would compromise patient safety, so that idea was abandoned. In terms of safety issues at this RPIW, one of the things we noticed was that there were grinding bottles for ophthalmology that were marked by pharmacy as using one syringe until empty and then discard. The interpretation was that it could have been used by more than one patient. So we brought about a change post Kaizen to put one syringe per packet, as you can see there. And when the packet is removed, it's clearly marked 
than one syringe per patient, not until the syringe is empty. We also developed a work standard around laterality. This is an issue, and it's also a hospital policy that all patients who are having surgeons, surgeries involving laterality should be marked prior to going into the home. You don't want to get your wrong leg amputated too. The multiple skill training schedule, I discussed this with half the specialists involving what we just discussed, and the plan is to get to all the specialists by the 31st of March. Those that I did speak to did sign on with the ideas that we discussed today. <coughs> My name is Carmen Kratz. I work in the operating room. <clears throat> I'm going to present on one of the two virus projects that we um, carried through this week, and now we'll talk about the other one. So the first one we did was a eye supply cart, and the pre-evaluation score was a 1.35. This is a picture of the cart before, so you can see that there's a lot of labeling, a little bit of clutter on the top. Again, a picture of the top, the writing that Dr. Blay spoke about right there. Um, this is just a drawer, so you can see that it is quite a lot of supplies and not labeled. And again, labeling was missing in this area of the cart. Our post vidas evaluation score was a 2.8. We did remove a few items, 490, I believe. 195 items were removed from that cart, and this is a picture of the cart post where you can see that there is labeled, um, the, the drawers are labeled as well, mm -hmm. and that's just another picture of it. Okay, and then now we'll carry on with the end. And now uh, Kathleen and I are reporting on the answer room number five. Our pre-evaluation score was 1.2. We removed a lot of stuff out of the room as well. You can see how cluttered they are. There were 54 items removed. Um, and you can see the blockage there from the eye wash station. Uh, and overstocked in inventory, boxes on counters uh, with uh, no labeling or this big area. Some cupboards missing labels or improper labels. And those are all the items that we removed. was um, our uh, post evaluation number was 2.9 and some this is an improvement and we go that clutter our cupboards our cupboards were uh, labeled inside and out and the and the uh, pictures of the contents of the cupboards will be laminated and posted on the outside of the doors um, to be better seen and we will be putting this in the newspaper. Okay, this is our post highs and value stream map and you could see that uh, we just used the value stream of the patient arriving in holding and going into the OR and we cut our um, the lead time down to 26 minutes and 23 seconds. This is our waste wheel, so pre-Kaizen, all those stickies are different areas that were identified by the team that were waste. And you can see there's a lot less stickies post-Kaizen. This is our newspaper. This is our special gift for Dr. Royven, um, <laughs> of our RPIW. You will note that there are quite a few hundred percents in there, um, but what we haven't been able to complete, so we'll be handing the newspaper over to Dr. Royden so he can take care of it. <laughs> and this is our post guys on target progress report sheet. Just to summarize and highlight some of the uh, improvements. Uh, for the defect <coughs> travel, we did notice the first day um, the telephone calls. We actually put in place before guys on week to try and start with surgeries for that whole week so we had that set up and we did notice um, just one day it was a phone call and it wasn't really regarding bed not being available it was a, the other way around the patient didn't show up so we did show 100% improvement in that the lead time we showed 20% improvement uh, the quality the defects per day uh, we had a little glitch first day of course with stuff being available and that was mostly due to us being in there and hindering everybody so none of you were 
so it started that day. But we did see um, with the bed availability that that was not really an issue for the week. Um, and hopefully with the communication and the standards that we're putting in that we will continue to see improvements in the areas of the late start. Um, and just to show the improvements in the 5S, the answer was 43% change of um, the 5S score and 36% for the iCart. And the holding or the cycle times was 15% improvement with, um, and we did cycle without IV starts and with IV starts, and both showed a bit of an improvement in that as well. So our workshop summary, uh, what we did put in place this week, we do have the, uh, the uh, charts available for the anesthetist to review the day before surgery to try to catch any of those glitches. Uh, we do have the COPAN studies now will be on the call sheet and available for uh, all of the staff in the hospital to be aware of that. I've also asked the anesthetist to maybe just give us a, a memo a communication tool just to let all of the staff in the hospital know exactly what services they have available. We've got many work standards that we put in place around first case of the day with the day surgeries as well as all of work starting at 7.45 regardless. And the safety issues that have been addressed, uh, such as reinforcement or the surgical site issue, and the work standards around the ECT booking schedule as well. Uh, we'll hopefully the Andon will be added to your as soon as we get that available, and just to, to support the staff and the physicians to start the OR on time. And another little thing we realized: the importance of having key members that are available for the whole week, and maybe having to look at the schedule so that we can um, accommodate that. We really noticed the anesthetists not being um, available. They were a great help to us when we were in the OR, but we felt like we were all doing it while they are doing their work. But had we had them as a um, team member for the whole week, I think would have been quite a bit of value. And here's our thank you sheet. Uh, again, to the OR staff, everybody there is really kind of used to these things going on, so we thank them for their patience and understanding. Uh, to our sponsor and process owner, uh, Laura Toronto and the scheduling staff were great. Um, of course, Les, Dawn was awesome. Uh, I can't say enough about our um, patient representative. She, we had very early mornings and she was there. And we have to thank Deb, what we call her the whip dollar, because she had us at work every morning at 7. And none of these people asked to go home until we said they could, so we were putting them all days and everyone was very willing. So it was a great team. Um, can't thank them enough. And I think that's all. Thanks for coming.